In the big bill stack, we'll keep you in the know. In the big bill stack, we'll fix your techie woes. And we'll break things and we'll make these till we're all together raking. And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it. And we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bill stack. Hello, welcome to episode 070 of Bill Shank. I'm joined by John, Mark, and Sandy, and Hello. we shall be talking about Rainbow Hat Rainbows. and Pikeade Hat. Pikeade Hat. We've been busy. Bill, nudge this way a little bit. You're not yeah. in the middle. <laughs> now that we've corrected that small problem, it's not again. really weird on do the do screen. Let's go do on. the intro again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 let's go on with it. So we've had a very exciting week this week. Uh, this nice. week we released the Rainbow Hat, uh, which is a hardware kit for the new Android Things platform from Google. So this is like the next generation of what was their Brillo platform with some other changes. Oh, I uh, did wonder why it was codenamed Brillo. Hat. I don't. I, oh, what, <laughs> way way back, yes. yes. Um, but this was this was a really interesting project because Google got in touch with us. Uh, a couple of months ago, I guess, a little bit longer, um, asking if we'd put together a hat for the Pi that's specifically to work with Android things, or at least to demonstrate the features of Android things. Um, so we went through a few kind of revisions with them on concepts and what we'd feature on it and what we were going to do with it, and this is the end result. And it's pretty cool. So it's designed to showcase various different protocols and buses and things with GPIO, isn't it? That Basically, yeah. The conscious choice of, of devices on there. The things that are on here are specifically so that we demonstrate basic input output, I squared C, SPI, um, what else is on there? Piezo, so PWM yeah, driven well. Piezo. And yeah, essentially uh, just a way to kind of show off all of those different features being driven by Android things. And I guess different types of kind of inputs and outputs that people might want to use with kind of IoT type things like displays and LEDs. Yeah, we tried to make it a nice varied set of kind of it features. Says, as learn well, how so. to use all the things before you start productizing your own IoT product, I guess. Yeah. Back on close up, Sandy. Mm -hmm. There it is. So it's got, um, it's got seven APA 102 RGB LEDs at the top and a rainbow arc, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, it's got um, two two digit 14 segment displays that are green. They are. Uh, <laughs> green <laughs> LEDs green. And for Android very, very important. reasons. On brand. Um, three cap touch buttons at the bottom that are linked to a driver chip that is then linked again directly to GPIO yeah, pins. I really like that it's driver chip. It's quite interesting. It's a, an Atmel part. Most capacitive touch chips tend to be I2C, but because we already had an I2C device on the board, which is the BMP280, we um, specifically picked a, a different part, which is an Atmel chip that essentially has capacitive inputs, five capac capacitive inputs, and then generates five digital logic outputs. So it's essentially just in line with the capacitor. That can actually pads. work on I2C as well, can't it? That it can run in another work. mode that is I2C. It's kind of cool, but I like the fact that you don't have to think about driving it in any way, shape, or form. You just touch a pad. And I guess that avoids yeah. any, con con fingers, that avoids well, any conflicts between I2C and... It does. You'd be pretty unlucky to pick two I just said conflicts devices. there because... Uh, Did someone ask you to say yeah, that? Yeah, someone had asked right, me to okay. say conflicts. So I'm just going to keep <laughs> saying go. conflicts for the whole episode. <laughs> conflicted. Um, yeah, and there's the BMP280 temperature and pressure sensor, mm -hmm. um, which is a tiny uh, little dot there. There, just below where it says change. Which is why the hat has a bit of a weather thing going for it. Yes, yeah. that's why it has the kind of brighter artwork on yeah. there. Um, the other quite interesting thing with this is that the uh, SPI device, or the SPI device, <laughs> is actually the APA102 pixels, which aren't genuine SPI devices like they have a data and a clock line that operate in a very similar way but they don't have any sort of chip select so what we've done is we've actually put a buffered kind of um, <laughs> chip select chip in there that disables those pixels when you change the SPI over to CE1 which is the other chip select available on the Raspberry Pi so we've essentially in hardware made them behave as if they're an SPI device which, bananas which is good fun um, but it was, it was cool this project because I was working with a guy called Johan on the Android things team and we'd throw back um, you know, ideas between each other about what we could do, how we uh, kind of shape the end result, and it went through a lot of 
not actual physical prototypes. We pretty much nailed it the first time, I think. But we spent a lot of time saying, you know, what what if we did this? What if we changed that? What if we relayed out these things? You know, how how do we pick the right parts? Uh, and I think the end result is pretty awesome, actually. It's got so many things on the back. It has. This is also, if you have a look at the back, you'll see how the pins for the 14-digit displays are kind of clear of anything else. We didn't work parts around the edges of them. And that's because <laughs> we've just recently got a selective solderer. And the idea is that obviously we'll be able to use it to do the selective soldering of those pins. Um, so you need a little bit of clearance. So we kind of packed all the guts of it right in the middle of those two um, rows These of are pins. the first pins we've done that are pre-trimmed as well, aren't they? Which is it's totally uninteresting probably to everyone, but it means that when you solder them on, you get a nice, not necessarily spiky finish, you get a nice little ball yeah. finish on there. They're not excessively Whereas if you long. snip them off after soldering, you get a much sharper finish. Yeah. And it's just something that I cut myself on the back of PCBs a lot, so... <laughs> I, I like it when the pins have a nice bald. In fact, you did that last night. Yeah, I did, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, and obviously there's the EEPROM on there um, to make it a hat, and it's just cool. And you can use it in Raspbian as well. We've got Python libraries for it. Python library. yeah. um, Sandy's put together Tutorial. a, including an example that plays Drunken Sailor. Ah. So we have a full tutorial on the <laughs> can't see. The learning um, portal that'll tell you how to get started, how to install the software. How to use all the different bits on it. Yeah, you did some nice uh, nice diagrams and stuff. Yeah. Was this the is this the vector that Paul did of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, cute. Yeah. This is this is dead, dead shiny. So this basically tells you everything you need to do to get started. Yep. And the API uh, the API is really nice, the Python API that Phil's put together. He's um, added methods so that when you're writing to the displays, you don't really need to care about the individual segment mappings. You can tell it to display some text because they're fourteen digit uh, fourteen segment displays, or you can ask it to display a floating point number and it does all the hard work for you. Unfortunately that's borrowed very heavily from Adafruit to like this. <laughs> Thanks Adafruit. You complete us. Um, so yeah, it's a cool Cool product. Yep. And obviously it was tied in with the Android Things launch, which happened on Tuesday, Tuesday. I want to say. Yeah, yeah Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, 5 o'clock our time, which was 9 a.m. Google time, which is what California Times now known as, because Google's so big. Google time. Google time. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good fun. It was great fun to be involved in something like that. So, And so we're really happy with the result. So I think we're going to try and do a quick demo of... Um, this is actually Android Things, right, as well, isn't it? This yeah, is not yeah, our yeah. Python API. Yeah. Do you want yeah. the close-up camera on that screen? Yeah, yeah cool sure. stuff. Let's see if I can figure this we'll out. Yeah, I've been seeing lots of tweets of people with the Android Things boot up and stuff. Oops. Oh, oh, we're getting us a reflection of the... reflection of the snake of the on the laptop. back of your laptop. Right, OK. Uh, let me just <laughs> zoom out a bit. Yes. Okay. Should we go full screen? Yeah. No, it should be okay. You're all right. Um, so what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 3 connected to a Pi display, Pi touchscreen display, and there's a ribbon cable um, connected to a mini black hat hacker with a rainbow hat on it. Um, we've got the Android Things image, which there's a link to in the product description um, on the product page for rainbow hat. Um, so if you click on that, then you should be able to uh, download the image and burn it to an SD card like you normally would with Raspbian or, or whatever. So not like Windows IoT, um, I guess, except easier to burn to an SD card. You know, yeah. Hide it inside some weird yeah. Windows-only tool. La, 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 um, la. There was an article on Hacker Day today about this, and some of the comments are quite interesting in that, obviously, because Android is a well-established and secure system, it allows you to create much safer IoT devices because you're working at like that level above. Whereas often, if you're working on an embedded thing like a eight two six six or whatever ESP eight two six six, and build, you know, you're almost dealing with all of the gnarly parts yeah, of the network stack and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're basically you're creating bugs for yourself and using much less well tested hardware <laughs> or software. As it Sandy Johan's in chat yeah, yeah, and he's that, asking yeah, yeah. if you've updated it. I have not. He tried um, to do a git pull and it didn't bring anything down, so we might have uh, tried it too early, Johan. We could try it live, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Um, right, so, so the other things that you need to do is basically you, what you do is you connect... Um, oh, I hope <laughs> the upside down Android things. I hope I've not connected this too late. The Ethernet cable. You haven't should, rotated it, man. You should pick it up. It. Um, yeah, so the display's not rotated because our display stand is kind of upside down and if you're <coughs> running Raspbian then you can, it's easy to flip it, but 
we've not flipped it here, but um, no, our display is the right way around. <laughs> but um, but actually, the the screen pretty much only says Android things on it, and um, the important thing is at the bottom of the screen or the top here. <laughs> um, it has the IP address of the. Um, oh, that's of, handy. Of it's rotated 180 so when you, degrees. Um, to when you first booted it. that image, did it just DHCP straight onto the network over wireless? Yep. And when you boot it, you uh, see the IP address. It, it's not. Screen. It's not on Wi-Fi. It's, oh, um, you're on. I've, I've just there, plugged right? a cable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's handy for getting set up, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes it straightforward. Yeah. It's nice. very similar yeah. again to the way Windows IoT works. Basically, you just stick the image in your Pi, stick it somewhere, boot it up, comes up on the network, and you target your IDE at it and deploy code. This is the Android things episode, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I like Visual Studio and go away. Alright, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, so download I'm Android sorry. download Android Studio onto your your main you know PC or or Mac or whatever. Um, uh, you have to make sure that you install the um, the not the seven point one uh, but the seven point zero um, version of Nugget or Nougat or whatever you want to Nougat. say. Oh, Nougat, if you're posh. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> Nugget, Nougat. I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, so, when you've done that, go to the Android Things GitHub organization. Uh, so that's github.com slash Android Things. There's a link to that in the description for the show. Um, and then download the weather station example. Um, Load that into Android Studio, um, and then um, now we've got your. I haven't actually line. seen this running at all. It's, I, I, yeah, I, it's I really. Only did the hardware side. I mean, so. I've I've done nothing on Android kind of app development before, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I found it really simple just to, to get it all connected. Um, so actually, can you write me an app for Pinout, please? <laughs> um, so what you have to do is you have to use the Android Debug Bridge (ADB). Mm -hmm. um, through your terminal on your main computer. Um, so I've got this on my Mac that is running Android Studio. Um, then you do ADB connect and then the IP address of the Pi, um, which is 194.0.194. Do that. Um, so it says Damon started successfully and then it says connected to, oh, no. to the IP address. That just runs in the background. Then you go back to Android Studio, click, um, just get the get Weather it. Station Master. Build. Build. Um, yeah, then basically go to run. Um, run, run. Um, if this goes horribly wrong, I've actually got uh, another. Um, I've got a, I've got one that I did. Here's one earlier. I made earlier. Sync field. Mm. So couldn't you use the ADP tool to enable SSH so that we can edit config text? Is the question. Uh, I think I've not. Oh, ADB shell. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's just having to download an extra component because um, I, d I did this on my iMac yesterday, um, ah, right, and I'm now okay. doing it on my Mac MacBook, so it's just. Installing yeah. another component. ADB um, shell, Sandy. That's how you go in to oh, right, okay. get a console. Thanks, Johan. <laughs> um, right, let's try that again. Du -du -du, syncing it. So ADB acts basically as a bridge between the d dev environment, the IDE, yep. and, and the, the device that you're actually Android programming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've come across it with Android phones yeah. before when I was trying to do something with cook ROMs or I can't even remember what but mm -hmm. the boot partition read only okay Update. Oh, it's updating all the things apparently all the Android um, things all the things <laughs> do, do, do. you am play God don't know how long this is going to take what I may do is I may just put the other SD card in just <laughs> have you got one pre-imaged yeah, yeah, I've got go. one that's running yeah, already. Yeah, let's, swap it let's, let's do that. Um, just have to take my word for it. It's very straightforward to do it. 
I'm not, of course I'm not going to be able to get the SD card out of the pie now because the display is on it. <laughs> Some tweezers. <laughs> yeah, if you have some, I don't think we've got any tweezers. <laughs> oh, I've, got, I've got no nails, but do you want me to try? I shouldn't have put a pipe or. Do you want to try pulling it out with the edge of the blade? Oh dear. This is good. Uh, live, <laughs> live demos, see? <laughs> That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> right, well, Sandy battles with the yeah. pie. Let's have a quick look at the Android Things um, website. Ooh, shiny. There are lots of things that apparently run Android. Well, this, this is another thing people were mentioning on the Hackaday post that obviously, as a platform for specifically IoT style development, because it targets many different hardware options, it, it gives you like a consistent platform you can use across devices, yeah, which, which is, is a nice feature. Super you know? useful. Um, and from here, you can find out all the information about what different devices you can use with Android things. Um, there's the documentation, kind of getting getting started guides, how to set up your hardware, uh, and basically all the information you need to get started. All of the uh, kind of links and documentation and any sort of guidance you need to get going, really. Nice. Very nice. It's nice. How are you doing, Sandy? Yeah, I've got the SD card in there. Oh, brilliant. Grillo. Right. Let's... Um, uh, we really, it was really slick the way we covered that. Tenuous. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this so one's just so pre-imaged, is it? This is one that you've already programmed. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Yeah, I found my uh, pliers. Uh, <laughs> okay. So it's bitting again. Um, when it's bitted, you should see the. Um, Oh, oh, close up, close yeah, up. Close up. Okay. There we go. Mm. Do, 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 do. Dry things. <coughs> it should actually make a noise as well. Um, <laughs> it's been programmed so it does a little kind of. Yeah. When, it, um, <laughs> when, it's, when it starts the app. Um, it's not drunken sailor though, is it? It's not. It's not drunken sailor. The other thing is that in the Android things GitHub um, organization, they've got um, lots of samples about how to use the different. Um, they call them drivers, don't they? Yeah, the different in, in drivers. The Android things yeah. kind of ecosystem, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. all the different kind of endpoints that you can talk to to enable the various and features. Yeah. 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 Yep. Which is a sensible way to abstract things. Really. Yep. So you can have your software on top of a bunch of thoroughly tested and widely used single drivers for various different devices. Um, we should also say at the moment that Adafruit have got a parts kit for this as well, which follows the same kind of um, format as the Rainbow app in individual breadboardable parts. And nice. Sparkfun have got an Edison thing. I don't know what Edison add-ons are called. Are they shields? Are they? I have no idea. The thing that you plug onto an Intel Edison. Plug on to that tiny, um, Sparkfun tiny have done one of those. Tenuous connector. Yes. It's booting. It's alive. It's happening. Is it happening, Sandy? Yep. Smart. Here we go. Come on. Come on, come on. Go. Does this all tie into some sort of cloud service as well? Yeah, so um, Google have got their uh, Google Cloud um, services. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's kind of similar to Amazon Web Services in the way that it works. Um, so they have like compute nodes that you can use and um, kind of like. Uh, database tools and things like that and yeah. um, they've also got kind of like data analysis and vis visualization um, features that you can use as well so um, you can actually um, kind of like stream all of this data um, through to one of your um, uh, servers and can then kind of like visualize live data coming from the rainbow app and this is, is yeah. that google weave is that that's the cloud kind of services behind this? Is it? Um, I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. I'm not, I haven't looked into it in a huge amount of detail yet, but I think they have like a, a, a custom IoT cloud almost for logging your sensor results and yeah, you know, whatever I think you want to when, do. when I looked at it, it, it was just the the Google um, kind of like standard Google cloud services Ooh. that I was looking at. Oh, it's chirped. It lives. It lives. Hey, and actually, I'd um, 
I, I put the wrong SD card in there, so that was like a fresh Android thing one, so I've actually just like synced the... So you just did what you meant to do the first time? Yeah, yeah, I've done what I did, meant to do the first time because it Nailed finished it. updating and stuff, so that that's it. Actually happened, kind of. Excellent. Um, yeah. So this is a demo that Johan put together, right? Yeah. Um, yep. For Rainbow Hat, which yeah, just really shows the current temperature, temperature which and is... the, the rainbow is the barometer reading, is it? Oh, there we go. I'm hot. Yeah. Apparently you're not a lizard, Phil. Yeah, the rainbow Excellent. is the rainbow is the, the test. The pressure reading. Um, so actually, when when you see when you put your finger over it, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can actually press, press it, it and increase. Oh the yeah, yeah, yeah. See the you pressure see, yeah. ticking up. Okay. And that's because the the actual sensor's got a little um, a little hole, isn't hole it? Basically, on the top of it. Yeah, yeah. Allows the um, the pressure levels to equalise inside there. Exactly. So if you cover that over, then the pressure is obviously going to change. Cool. Uh, pressure is going to go up. And can you tap um, button A on this demo as yeah. well? There so, you go. Yeah. So that displays the pressure on the display. Yeah. That's your barometric pressure yep. reading, which yep. is what's used in aviation. And for hectopascals and weather as well. Yeah, for setting an altimeter. 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 Um, so that's a cool little demo, isn't it? Does that do any chirpy things? Um, it just does the, on startup. the chirp on startup, yeah. Uh, we've also got, as we mentioned, the Python API, which Phil's done some examples for, one of which will play <laughs> What Should We Do With The Drunk On Sailor at you really badly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so horrible. It's all the right notes, just not necessarily in the right order. But it is hilarious. Um, yeah, so that's very cool. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, I found it really easy to, to get it all set up. Um, the, I guess the other side of it, if you want to take it further, is actually digging into the to the app and then kind of like playing with the code and changing it to, to do yeah. different things or looking at the driver examples and then kind of putting together your own your own app. Um, well there's loads of stuff you can do. I mean it's obviously the Android Things platform itself is very flexible because it's basically just Java code with yeah. access to hardware. The Rainbow Hat is just a set of example features for you to play with. But you can do loads of stuff with that too because of the displays and um, kind of sensors and things. So yeah it's cool. Uh, yeah. Johan is saying you're absolutely right Sandy, it was Google Cloud, yep. and that Weave is more of a command control thing, something Ooh. to do with when you want to control it from your if phone. you want your Pi botnet. I think so. Um, so that's very, very cool. Yep. We like it. And Rainbow Hat just looks so much fun. It's really cool. Yeah. Very pretty. Very pretty. Nice. Thank you. So, PyCade Hat. On to PyCade Hat. Indeed. This is very exciting. <laughs> this is the first... <coughs> New PyCade related thing we've had in well over a year, I think. It is, and it's good as well. It's, it's very, nice. very good. It's Let's go full screen close up for that one. Yeah. Um, Let's have a, a little guided tour. This is yeah, the first of a few kind of new PyCade related things that will be coming out over the next few months. Um, we've specifically designed the hat as a great way. So at the moment, PyCade has like a USB HID device, almost an Android. Uh, Android. Arduino style. Yeah, uh, it's literally an Arduino Leonardo that it connects over USB. Pretends to be a keyboard slash gamepad, which we like. It's nice in some ways. It works with lots of platforms, but it's more expensive. So we wanted to do something in hat format where we could bring the cost down. Uh, and the other benefit of putting it on the hat is we've got the digital audio from the Pi. So we've integrated a three watt amplifier on here as well. So you've got an I2S. Stroke amplifier. The chip. amplifier is not the biggest chip on the back of the ball. That's in fact the EEPROM. The yeah, the EEPROM's always the that biggest. That tiny little square fellow. Um, so you can use this to build kind of all sorts of projects. It doesn't just have to be. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> you're close to being. There you go. There's your amp chip. It's well, actually an nice integrated pointer, Sandy. I2S What's the e -prom? DAC stroke amp. And there's your EEPROM. Um, so this is great for building your own kind of arcade projects, similar to our PyCade or PyCade console. Um, but if you want to make your own cabinet, you still need some way to drive the controls. So this is a, a, a really easy way to do it, because it's got the integrated. Mo it's a mono amplifier. You, uh, it's very easy to also have the sound from the Pi playing out. And the other thing that we've done with this is we've put a soft power switch on it. So which is super one nice. Very nifty. If you if you switch to the spare cam, which is the Pi symbol on the keyboard, then I should be able to press oh, so this. Oh, hold on. Let's put, put it in small then. So, yeah. so I okay. should be able to press this power button on the side. And um, I should boot. Light magic. So the way this works in a, is in a that moment it should go. Whoop. You hook up a button to one of the screw terminals on the hat, the power screw terminal, and when you it's tap your the button connected to it, circuit, isn't it? Well, it's Nico's. Well, Nico's circuit. wonderful latching circuit. When you press the button, it will automatically uh, enable power to pass through to the Pi, allowing it to boot. When you then press and hold the button for three seconds, the Pi will 
cleanly shut itself down and then signal back to the hat to cut the power, which cuts it off completely. Um, which means that you won't have any sort of SD card corruption issues, and you don't need to keep pulling the power, <laughs> you don't the power back in, yeah. which is really annoying. Which is nice. So, let's sh before we do anything else, let's shut this down. So, there's a Python daemon that runs in the background <coughs> and handles the controls. So, that basically goes through, checks the GPO pins that the controls are on, and raises events through U input for anything that, well, when you move the joystick, it'll create a U input event, and it's completely indistinguishable indistinguishable from a real keyboard, basically. It's basically, so you input injects through all of, yeah, events into the kind into of input the, stack, yeah, right? Which is stack, exactly yeah. the same way that they're generated from a keyboard or a mouse or a joystick. Which means this works gloriously in RetroPie. Um, the controls nice. are really nice and tight as well. They work really well, which is nice, but... The same Python daemon actually watches for this button to be held down for three seconds, and it's held down for three seconds. I think three seconds is too long. No, no, it's come to be long. You'd be surprised how, how hmm. long your hand can rust against something. So there you go, Pi shut down, and the power's been and cut. you'll see there's no lights or anything running on. You can just see the lights probably on the end there, and if I turn it on again... Oh, yeah, there. so you there can. Go. Lovely. Latching wonderment. Which is something people had asked for with Picade, because it is, it's a pain having to both kind of SSH in, shut down the Pi cleanly, and then pull the power or turn it off at the wall. <coughs> and now you don't have to. Because it basically won't draw any current while it's in that kind of standby state. It's just. You'll be doing nothing. Micro amps, won't it? It'll be very, very, very small. And it's only 15 pence. So much cheaper than the Pi K PCB. Because we don't need the expensive AVR chip on there. Uh, and actually, the amplifier on the Pi K PCB is more expensive than the one Combined? that we used on the hat. Back in oh yeah. yeah. Well, it's guess. only mono one, so it's single channel. So right now we've got some ROMs on here to tinker about with. These are all actually dumps that I've taken from my own cartridges, so all about as legal as it's possible to all get. All board. All so above board. Speak. Nice. We have all the carts for all of these ROMs here, except for Tanglewood, incidentally. No, no pirating apart from uh, <laughs> apart from Phil's t-shirt. The only pirating we be doing is pirating on the high seas. <coughs> uh, so yeah, controls very nice and responsive. It's hard to tell here because the feedback loop between the HDMI and the capture card and me seeing it on screen is actually quite quite slow comparatively, but it's, it's nice. You should be hearing the audio of the joystick clicking and seeing it move at about the same time. So we'll go ahead and have a look at this because this is um, a little bit shiny, a little bit different. Tangle word. This is a, a new Mega Drive game in point of fact that is currently in its last three days on Kickstarter. Oh, this, this is cool. the one that you linked the this other day? This is the Tanglewood one that I keep linking, yeah. Oh, cute. Because it's, it's so close to being funded right now, and it's just awesome to see someone come along and build something new. So this is essentially like a modern Mega Drive game yeah, that's being kickstarted at yeah. the moment. This nice. is very, very prototype, though, this. Is it? And it's a guy that has like worked in game development for, about I think, about 10 years, and mm -hmm. he's worked on like some really big games. Like um, AAA titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He has some yeah. really fascinating videos yeah. actually of his development setup and how he has like the it's original the development original Mega Drive, Drive yeah. development kit yeah. to do this kind it's of amazing. stuff. Come on, wake up, wake up. Yeah. So your character's this little robox creature. Oh, I love how you can um, feel the Picade rumble when it does that. <laughs> it's like a rumble pack. It's byproduct the of the fact the speaker's in there. It's like a Game Boy rumble pack. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting that. The, certainly the text and stuff looked very modern because of the changing style. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Even though it was done with the same technology. Yeah, exactly. It's like 20 years since the Mega Drive was a thing, really, isn't I it? I love and the character animation that he's, he's got as well. It's just really lovely. It's dead cute. It's great. Oh, that ball was falling there, not going that way. Nice. It's, it's a cute game. But anyway... Yeah, so this is a, a demo that you can download on the Kickstarter page. Um, and I think it's got about two days left, is it? Something yeah, like something that. to that effect. And are we running really RetroPie cool. on this one? We are, yes. Yeah. This is RetroPie. This is... Um, I can't remember which Mega Drive emulator RetroPie builds in. Mm -hmm. Can't keep track of them all these days. But if we go back out, we can switch to something Very cool. a little bit more familiar. I can't actually see what any of the, the names are. Les, Les is um, saying that you didn't dump the ROMs, Phil. Just but I know he did because he was doing it last yeah, night. What do you mean? I, he personally dumped the I ROMs. I did personally dump the ROMs. I have a Retrode, which is basically a Mega Drive and SNES cartridge reader. I mean, you can see the checksums on the end of the ROMs as well, which is a, you won't find those file formats anywhere else. They're my ROMs! 
They're his realms. They're mine. Dems him. Dems him. I should have brought the retro <laughs> in and I actually jumped to the wrong <laughs> live on air to get rid of the haters. You were just wrong. Oh, Sonic and Knuckles. Brilliant. But yeah, why, why would I not? So are you we assume gonna... that I don't have access to a ROM dumper, sir? Are we going to start bundling these with the packet consoles then? <laughs> not with the current version, because no. we need to make changes to the yeah. chassis. Whoops, sorry, Phil. Oh. <laughs> Oh, um, but we we are here. working on a revision to start using the hat <laughs> in view of the current driver board. But it, it, yeah. we have no idea when that's actually going to be, because it changes quite a lot about cut the how it's the going. console a little bit. But it changes what the console is as a product, really. Though, it, well. it does a little bit. It's something we're working on, but it could be it could be three months. I mean, we just don't know when it will be available. So oh, it's, it's certainly that's the direction we want to take it, because with the console, there's no requirement or... or Intention to support other devices like Nook or whatever. There's not enough space. Well, it's in interesting there, so. that the console, when you take the Pi out of it and run a wire out, you can use it with stuff like the PlayStation as a, an arcade controller. By like using a fight the stick fight stuff. stuff. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't seem to have gained much be, yeah. tra traction as a fight stick, but you can use it that way. Or as you said, all the fight sticks that are out. Yeah, all the <laughs> already perfectly decent fight sticks. Or you could actually use it as a second controller. Oh for yeah, your, for another Pi kit. For your Pi kit. Those uses wouldn't work if you replaced it with a Pi kit hat, but it would make it as a kind of standalone, having your house set up quite a lot cheaper. What we should, the main thing is, we should be able to make it a little bit smaller because at the moment yeah. it's a touch on the bulky side. It is a touch on the bulky and side, and we should be able to get the price point down because the hat's cheaper than the. Which main would be PC nice. Thing, so that's what we're working on there. The other thing with the Picade hat is, while it's great for doing kind of arcade style projects, it's actually great as just any sort of digital installation controller. So you can that. hook up like nice big arcade buttons, great for building digital installations yeah. for kids to interact with. You've got the sound, amplifier, so you've got sound that you can produce, whack-a-mole style things. Yeah. Um, you could use the IOs for other purposes as well. Obviously our driver kind of naturally maps them to certain things, but you can still drive LEDs off those. They're just straight IOs to the Pi. Yeah, it's so. using the, in, uh, the Pi's pull-up. So. And you get a little breakout of extra pins anyway down the side. So you could run, say, a near pixel strip off, pulling off the PWM pin. Should be is useful if you want to do a lit power button. Uh, <laughs> it <laughs> is... Uh, on the is it not? Yeah. Well, oh, it's power. 26 or 13. Or either of them. Pin, no, they're not PWM. 13 is, isn't it, if it's BCM 13? Possibly. We'll check. If only it was on pin out. <laughs> if only. Is it on the website for this? Is it on the PCM pin? Oh, no, sorry. Pico hat is not yet. Oh. Have, um, there's a work in progress for that. Um, so we have Placade Hat, we've got it on our store, it went up yesterday, and you can get the hat on its own, which looks glorious, uh, or you can buy it as a bundle, and with the bundle we've included, I think it's 13 arcade buttons, our wiring loom, which is basically the best bit of the bundle, because you don't want to have to make these wiring looms by hand, they're horrendous. Uh, we include a joystick and also a speaker that's got pre-soldered wires. So you don't have to do any soldering at all, you just need to build your kind of enclosure and then mount it all in there and away you go. And even the buttons and things, they just pop. So long as your sheet material is kind of like four or five millimetres thick and you cut the right size hole, in. they pop in and clip in there and they'll just retain themselves. So it's right. very straightforward. You can actually, you can buy like, um, I guess, arcade chassis on eBay. Um, <laughs> really? Like, just kind of like, very similar to our Picade ones, but not powder coated. Um, so basically, just the bare MDF. They cost about like between forty and eighty quid. So oh, something like that. Is that like a full size cabinet that you put your own screen in? They're so. they're kind of like probably slightly bigger than Picades. Yeah. Um, People do they tend to have good the screens on eBay? Kind of tabletop size. Do they have the holes pre-drilled? You do. Things yeah, like, yeah. So you'd have to check your hole sizes are right for yeah. the buttons and the stuff. Buttons, but but apart from that. I think they're kind of like a standard. Um, size aren't they 30 mil I think these buttons. It's on the website I can't remember um, the exact size. I'm pretty sure they're 30 mil the smaller ones are 24 mil I think. Yeah that sounds familiar. Um, yeah I think we're right. So yeah. So that's very cool. We love Picade Hat. Lots of fun. We're just going to get the software finish and published. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's basically there. Um, the only other thing to say is that our last shipping day for Christmas in the UK is the 20th, which is next Tuesday. Yikes. Um, so make sure you get your order in by then if you want to uh, have it in time for Christmas. The post office strike doesn't really affect our shipping, so it's not going to cause any issues from our point of view. So. It might affect your collection from a local post office. If you so have to go and physically collect, skip it may work cause you and stay at home all day and wait for the posting. It's a logical thing to do. Indeed. Anyway, I think that's it for us. Yeah, too right. Don't forget to like. Comment and subscribe. 
And, and we'll see you next watching. week. The last week before Christmas. <gasps> ah! oh, oh.